You know, I was going to take a break from reviewing Debian-based distributions for a short while, but enough of you have requested that I take a look at Linux Mint Debian Edition that I had no other choice but to oblige. So today is the day I do that. So, um, for those of you that don't know, Linux Mint Debian Edition is very similar to the Linux Mint uh, or the other members of the Linux Mint family, with one glaring exception, is that it's based on Debian testing, and as such is a rolling, or at least semi-rolling distribution. I'll talk more about the differences as we go through the install process. Um, but like I said, I wasn't actually going to cover that, uh, cover this distribution anytime soon, but you guys did request it quite a lot, a good number of you did, so I, I kind of feel I'd be letting you down if I didn't. So, I downloaded the latest installer, which as of recording is the March 2014 installer, and it clocks in at 1.3 gigabytes, if I remember correctly, which uh, I've got to admit, I was considering it's a rolling distribution. I was expecting, for some reason, a smaller ISO file, but I booted it into my virtual machine, or I started the boot process, as you can see here, and this is the live CD. I've got the 64-bit Cinnamon version, um, and actually I did check on the website to see if there were any noticeable differences between the Cinnamon and the Mate versions that they'd mention on the on the website and they do mention that mate is considered to be traditional whereas they try and paint cinnamon as slightly more innovative considering that they generally have a slightly more conservative view towards user interfaces than um their big brother ubuntu um i would say both are kind of traditional like i say there's about a cigarettes um cigarette papers width uh between them in differences but that's just my humble opinion. Uh, feel free to share your own down in the comments section below. So, without further ado, let's uh, let's get cracking. So, let's start Linux Mint. Now, because I am running the Cinnamon Edition, um, it uses uh, a different display setup in terms of its software, so I might have to switch between uh, various capture methods. So there might be a little bit of juxtaposition and um, coming out of immersion, as, as, as I might say if I was a Let's Player, uh, in this recording like, I, like like there was with the previous Cinnamon one, but um, nothing too much there. Um, so the difference between... Uh, this is referred to as a semi-rolling distribution, um, and from what I've understood from it, about once a month they actually take a snapshot of the updated Debian testing repositories and they uh, provide them as an install update. So rather than have a new version released every six months as you tend to do with the regular uh, distributions. Um, there you go, so I just had to switch over to recording 3D graphics now. Um, you have lots of small updates rather than a big update every six months. So um, that's generally the uh, the thinking behind it. Uh, I have been called up before on, on uh, outlining that I kind of feel that sh um, rolling distributions, and I guess part of this would be semi-rolling distributions, are known to be less stable than scheduled distributions. Scheduled distributions being the ones that are released every six months, rolling distributions being the ones that have small but very, very often and regular updates. Um, yeah, basically, if you know what you're doing and if you have an intricate knowledge of repositories, dependencies, and how your operating system works, then you can have a rolling release distribution that's just as stable as a scheduled one. But, like I say, it's only really as stable as a scheduled one if you are an advanced Linux user that knows your system very, very well. And uh, the idea behind uh, semi-rolling, as what you're seeing with Linux Mint Debian uh, edition, is the splitting the difference, it, where you have a rolling distribution, so you have very cutting-edge, very bleeding edge um, software updates um, and 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 very uh, you know and the latest and greatest software, but also you have that kind of degree of stability by um, having monthly I think it is snapshots. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the bundled package. Now I have had a look at this uh, prior to uh, recording. It's exactly the same uh, from what I can sell. I can't see any obvious differences in uh, the packages that are being bundled. Um, color management, I don't remember that being there, but that, that could have just passed me by last time around. The um, the important ones are, you've got VLC Media Player, that's included, Brazero, Banshee, you've got your LibreOffice, uh, still comes with Firefox, Mozilla, comes with Pigeon, Internet, Messenger, Transmission, XChat, IRC, you've got all your Mint tools, your Software Manager, which is uh, as good as ever. Um, you've got the Mint uh, Update, tools which are also there you go the update manager down there so uh, a lot of great stuff here 
Now, when uh, I was downloading and looking at the store page, I say the store page, the download page for uh, Linux Mint, they do say that there might be some rough edges, that it's not as polished as their flagship distributions. Um, but as of so far, just from looking at the live CD here, it looks just as polished to me. Um, so I even had a bit of a gander in the uh, software repositories, and they do include a Steam installer. They do include a lot of the things that you don't, won't see in Debian testing. So they do uh, improve the Debian testing um, experience significantly, actually. They probably add more to this distribution than they do to the Ubuntu one. But let's install and see... Uh, where that takes us. Now, I'd imagine that they use the tried and tested installer that they use on their other two distributions, and why not? It's a good installer. It does the job. No complaints with it whatsoever. Um, but then again, like I say, I've been installing distributions for quite some time now. Oh, actually, does this... Mm, this might be just a different version of this. Oh, that looks slightly different. Colored map. Yeah, this is... is this. This is like the same process, the same stages, but... Right, so my full name. So, selecting a picture. This looks... Like a different... I know, I just... Right. Well, this does look like... Ah, here we go. What does the mount partitions look like? Oh, okay, we have to go into a separate like program or something for that. Uh, so yeah, I've got the VirtualBox hard disk here. Now, uh, for those of you that are interested, or unless it comes up and you guys are wondering, um, yeah, I've got the Mate Edition currently installed here. Um, so hang on, oh, so does this mean... Ah, mount partitions. Oh, yeah, manually mount partitions. Right, okay, so... Ah, this is interesting. So we have to, this is, uh, basically what I have to do here is I have to see, see this is how my uh, disk drive is partitioned. I've got swap space. Um, for those of you who don't know what swap space is, um, don't worry about it for now. If you are unclear as to what swap space is and how to use it, please let me know down in the comment section below and I will do a video explaining the concept behind swap space. Um, and uh, what it wants me to select the drive partition to assign to, which... Um, you don't do on Ubuntu, um, and you can also assign your home partition as well. It's a very user-friendly way of doing it, especially if your hard disk is already set up. Um, format as, ex, yeah. Mm, okay. Install Grub, yep. We don't want to install Grub, yep. Okay, so this does look like it's a little bit more... Um, advanced, a little more advanced, a little different. Um, and like I say, I've been installing Linux distributions for a good number of years now. So whereas this process is second nature to me, even on a what appears to be a different installer, or at least a different version of the installer, although the process is very, very similar, um, it could it could possibly be a little trickier for um, for new users. I'm sure if you read through the documentation, you'll have no problems. Um, but then again, um, there is a lot of documentation when it comes to things like open source software, Linux distributions, and it can all be a, a little overwhelming. Um, but that being said, um, I don't see too many problems here. I don't you know I don't I don't see anything that a quick FAQ would be a, you know wouldn't be able to solve. Okay, so we are in the install process now. At home, Linux Mint is the fourth most l widely used desktop operating system behind Microsoft Windows, Apple Mac OS, and Ubuntu. Interesting. It's fully compatible with Debian. Do you know what I always uh, question about these little install slides? Is why, like, they, they, it's often a slideshow saying how great the operating system is. Um, but if you're currently in the process of installing it, you're you're sold. You're sold. You're you're already signed up to the program. Um, however, what they could be using those boxes for is perhaps a few video tutorials on some of the basics of your operating system. Uh, that's how I've always imagined it to be, you know, how, how, um, how it can effectively be used. 
So, um, so far, I mean, this looks near identical minus the, the, the slightly different install process to the main uh, flagship Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition. And I've got to say, um, that's great. That's great. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to crack open the Firefox web browser as it's installing. And I want to just go through some of the uh, bits and pieces uh, and some of the information regarding the Linux Mint Debian edition, some of the things that the developers uh, kind of want to outline. That black flickering uh, is as a result of my virtual machine. Um, part of me says that it's because it's running out of virtual memory, like I've allocated a certain amount of... Um, uh, video memory and it's run out but no matter how much I set that memory to it always seems to flicker a little but I think it's just the nature of how it's being emulated so I've got linuxmint.com the start screen for Debian and of course you can see the latest news about Cin Cinnamon and Mate being released um, if we just crack on to linuxmint.com uh, we should I think be able to pick up uh, Linux Mint Debian edition from there Okay, so what have we got here? Um, yeah, oh, this is where, yeah, this is what I was referring to earlier. Sleek, modern, innovative for Cinnamon is how they describe it. Stable, robust, traditional. So those are the kind of the two frameworks that they're trying to paint it as. Both of them, like I say, very identical. They could just go with one or the other and just have, you know, or, or at least promote one above the other. But they seem to be like twins, as it were. Okay, so here we are, Linux Mint Debian Edition, and this is the installer I've got. They don't have a three-word tagline. Maybe they should. Um, do we have an announcement or is it going through? Yeah, it's just going through to the blog now. Okay, so I think, is the install process downloading something? No, I think there must be something, maybe in, something in another window that's using up my bandwidth. Okay, so, proud to announce, yada yada. The two, yeah, and of course, Linux Mint Debian edition, it comes in the two flavors. It comes in the cinema edition, it comes in the mate edition. Um, but like I say, you know, you've, you guys have already seen, mate, how it works. What have we got here then? Highlights. Update pack 8, Cinnamon 2.0, mate 1.6. Latest mint tools and improvements. Um, support for EFI and GPT. If you're new to LMDE, um, welcome to Linux Mint Debian. Um, so, yeah, LMDE in brief. Linux Mint Debian Edition is a semi-rolling distribution based on Debian testing. It's available in both 32-bit, 6 and 64-bit as a live DVD with Cinnamon or Mate. So that's four immediate Linux Mint Debian Edition distributions there and then. And, and I guess that's kind of sometimes why, why I, have, I, I have a bit of a go at Linux Mint for just throwing distributions at you of, of a very similar setup, but with very small differences. Um... Graphics card, um, oh, that's the system requirements. Um, yeah, and it doesn't, uh, it's not uh, not over the top. And it also comes as a torrent as well. I uh, did get the torrent version. And by and large, it's always, it's always nice to take the um, the torrent version and, and perhaps leave it to um, seed a little after you've downloaded it. If you'd like to pay back, uh, you know, if you'd like to... Um, you know, pay something back to the, the Linux Mint community if you're perhaps not particularly um, expert in technical fields, in the technical side of things, then maybe just, uh, yeah. So you can download it here, um, and then there's some people's responses to it. Um, but all in all, yeah. That's it. Uh, known problems. That's, yeah. So yeah, uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition, um, like I say, they do mention that um, it's a little rough around the edges um, and there is a lot of downloading to do. So if you are on a data limit, stay away from this, you know, because you will need to, uh, you will need to update regularly. Um, or at least you will want to. That's kind of the idea. It's for people that uh, that maybe w want to steer away from Ubuntu, want to go more because uh, the Debian-based distributions are definitely more embracing of uh, the open source culture. Ubuntu, whereas they they do embrace open source culture to a very large degree, they also hold back a lot of intellectual property as well, which of course is their prerogative to do so. Um, 
but it is because of attitudes like that uh, are why platforms like Steam and Steam OS are being based on Debian and not Ubuntu. There was a discussion. They were thinking of basing Steam OS on Ubuntu because that's the platform that the developers have been developing for. But um, but it, I think Linux, uh, I think Ubuntu and the you know the Ubuntu um, uh, and Canical, the company that that own Ubuntu, would want to take a slice of that pie and. Um, and and Steam were like, well, sod it, we'll just go to Debian. Um, and yeah, Debian. Uh, well, you can't uh, you can't deny that they have had one of the most positive impacts in uh, in in the open source world and and the Linux world. Um, but you can imagine. So uh, after doing this is my third video now showcasing a Linux Mint distribution, and um, and as you guys know, of course, I am a huge, huge Linux Mint fan. And um, since I started making video, well, I've started making videos about Linux for years now, um, many of which are not online still. Um, my opinion, even on this channel here, has changed on uh, Linux Mint quite a lot. Uh, what I mean is that one of my criticisms of Linux Mint was that the uh, update process was a little clunky, and um, having to to reinstall on a you know every every single six months if you want to keep up to date, and not making it incredible you know not making it obvious or easy to put your home on a separate partition, um, and and you know. Now, the, with their, their more long-term strategy of basing their flagship Linux Mint releases on long-term support releases of Ubuntu, um, which, is, which is presumably going to make the up, uh, upgrade process just like more like a service pack update process, as I think someone mentioned in the comments section. Um, and, uh, and that, that would, uh, that, you know, that took away probably my biggest criticism of Linux Mint, um, which I think... I think only leaves um, not having like a, a solid app store. I, I think like, I mean the, the install process, the install, um, you know, mint, uh, the process to install uh, packages from the repository is fine. Fine. It's perfect. But um, it's not an app store. You can't buy uh, products from it. Um, but then again, um, is that, entirely necessary i mean with steam coming to linux and, and steam being uh be embracing the linux family in a fantastic way uh, and valve uh and, and, and you know everything involved around that whole side of things are we going to see um steam as perhaps an app store not only for games for linux but also for software as well i mean we do know that on windows and mac uh, Steam sells software. In fact, my editing software for Windows, uh, which is Magix, uh, I bought on Steam because um, it's the idea of having an app store uh, like that just to manage the software that I own. If my hard disk disappeared tomorrow, if my house burnt down, I would still own uh, that, you know, all the same software, um, which is kind of why I do like the idea of app stores. Um, and maybe uh, you know, maybe we might see some uh, some nice, uh, pretty advanced proprietary software come to Linux through the Steam Store, which uh, which would be pretty damn awesome. Steam, of course, are developing or they have developed a uh, compatibility layer, which means that if you can install Steam on a system, you should then be able to install um, any uh, Linux, uh, any piece of software off the Steam Store um, that's compatible with Linux. That means it's, it should, in theory, be compatible for all distributions of Linux, providing you can actually get Steam up and running. Um, I've not put that through its paces. I've not tested it. I can't personally verify that. But that is the claim. The claim is that if you can get Steam running, you can get everything. That, uh, if you can get Steam running on Linux, then you can get any of the programs and games that are supported by Steam to run on the same distribution as well, which is, well, if it's true, that's pretty awesome. Um, but I got to admit, that's a big claim. That's a big, 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 big claim. And of course, Valve and Steam claim that in the future, uh, we will be able to run any piece of all the software available on Steam will be cross-platform, uh, cross or at least available on um, Steam. That would be, uh, that'd be pretty damn awesome. That'd be pretty damn awesome indeed um, to make anything that's available for Windows available for, for Linux. Um, they claim they claim that they're going to do it either through emulation, the compatibility layers, streaming, whatever. They you know they uh, they certainly are making some pretty fanciful claims. I hope they're true. 
And uh, let's be honest, when Valve say they're going to do something, they, you know, tend to be you know, pretty, pretty uh, adamant that they're going to do something. Of course, let's not, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that Valve are a company that cannot sin. Of course, we have seen a lot of problems with Valve and Steam uh, over the past year or so, but um, to me, it's certainly overwhelming that uh, the, the positives that they've brought to the gaming community have definitely outweighed the cons. Um, definitely so. Um, and I, I would imagine that even Steam's harshest critics would, would probably agree with that. Um, maybe uh, hesitantly agreeing with it, but agreeing with it nonetheless. Um, yeah, Steve, Steam are, are, is, is a good platform. Right, okay, so still waiting for it to install. Yeah, after doing this is my third long video where I, where I go through a, uh, a distribution. Now, I'm, I'm running out of things to say about Linux Mint. I'm running out of things to say, but, you know. Like I say, if there are any distributions you'd like to uh, see me take a run at, um, please leave them down in the comment section below. I do have uh, like a, a schedule that of, of things that I'm trying to work on, but like I say, I wouldn't be testing this, this for you if a good number of you guys didn't mention it down in the comment section below. Um, there was, yeah, like you, you know, you guys were, were certainly, certainly um, adamant that you wanted to see this. Um, and hear my thoughts on it. So, um, so I'm certainly certainly going to oblige if there is a particular demand for it. Um, and I was, I, I suppose, I was going to wait until I don't know. I don't know what I was waiting for. I mean, it was always on the to-do list, but uh, but like I said, I was going to take a, a break. I was going to move away from some of the Debian-based uh, distributions because Debian-based distributions, it, it's my comfort zone. You know, once you're happy with the way that a distribution or a set of distributions are put together, then uh, then, then it's 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 very comfortable. Um, might try something based on Arch. I'm always interested to see what these uh, those guys can do. Um, some of you guys wanted to check, uh, wanted me to check out Puppy. I will be checking out Puppy. I think Puppy. I've used Puppy on netbooks before. It's a fantastic distribution. Very innovative. Very 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 fast. Um, I've used Puppy to restore very very old like laptops that are older than 15 years 15 years um when i was uh, working one of my previous jobs as a network admin for a small office um we were on an incredibly tiny budget very 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 tiny budget everything we had was second hand and some of our machines uh were uh, were throwouts like uh, like uh, various offices in in the city were were going to throw out their machines and we said look if you're going to throw them out like you know, can we have them? And, and, and that's how we gained a lot of our equipment. And what we did, what we ended up doing is go, get, we got these machines that were running Windows 95 and we cleaned them up. We sort of took them apart. We filled them up with RAM, those, those that weren't full up. Um, we took out their hard disk drives. We, um, uh, and then we put them as part of a PXE network. Um, for those of you that don't know how what a PXE network is, is that uh, imagine a server, and then imagine all the network cables coming off of the server and coming out through various hubs, and then your then the computers being plugged, you know, connected into the network would boot directly off the server. The server would be effectively acting as 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 how you'd boot off a hard disk drive or a live CD or anything like that. You would actually boot through the network and the actual interface and all the processing power and all the graphics power comes from the server we went all out we basically what we did is we spent all our budget on the server got the biggest baddest server that we could find and then we um just used throw out computers throw away computers um to plug into that network we had a network of about what was about eight or nine computers um just being PXE booted off of this uh, one mega server, which ran Fedora, believe it or not, so it wasn't even inside my comfort zone. Um, but the guy who set me up was a was a was a Fedora fanboy, and uh, and he knew a lot more about these kind of things than I did. So you know, had, you had to defer to intellectual authority, don't you? And um, and it worked a treat. It worked an absolute treat because effectively providing. Oh, what have we got here then? There we go. Um, yeah, because basically once you've got the, the, the system set up, yeah, we had problems with it. As you, you have problems with all networks. But the problems that we had, um, you, you fixed from the central main computer. Um, there, there, there are a few problems. Um, 
when you have PXC based networks. There we go. Um, the, the the big problem, of course, being if something happens to your server, you've just lost nine computers. There's there's nothing you can do. Um, but but that means there's only one computer you have to maintain, one server you have to maintain. So it's uh, it's kind of a trade-off, you know. But it does have that added benefit that you're not constantly running around offices, um, typing from over people's shoulders, etc. And um, so we'll restart now. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know if any of you guys who watch this channel run or have run or use PXE networks, but um, I'll just switch over to monitor capture. Nope, that's the wrong one. There we go. Um, Right, then I just need to reset. And I don't know what you guys think of... Um, this is booting off of the CD. I've got to actually uh, go into my virtual machine and virtually take the uh, CD out of the drive, I think. Storage, yeah. So I've got that, so I've got to... Right, okay. Hold on a second, guys. Um, so basically what's happened is that the uh, uh, on, the, on the reboot, they haven't, uh, the CD wasn't ejected. So I need to just go into my virtual machine and eject the CD manually as you would do. There. Um, and we can remove that. There we go. Start off again. So, so yeah, like I say, uh, it was a good way to run a network, and we ran. There we go. That's the uh, regular process. So you got the recovery mode. You got the install uh, the thing mode there. Uh, there were actually a lot less settings on that install process, weren't there? There was, wasn't the uh, setting to automatically log in, if I remember correctly, and things like that. Um, it did. It was. Uh, it only gave you the bare essentials. But then again, of course, you can change these things once you boot it up for the first time. So it's all, uh, it's all loose change here. And if you're running the Debian edition, uh, you know, it, you should be doing it, being aware of uh, knowing that it's going to have some rough edges. So. Uh, I've not actually booted into an installed version of the system before, so this is uh, this is going to be new for me. But I'm imagining it's going to be the same as what happened the last few times. Okay, so got the new screen here. It'd be interesting to see if I need to switch to uh, to the different recording mode as well. Okay, yep, I think so. Let's see, yep. So we've got the all too familiar uh, LMDE Cinema 64-bit welcome screen. It doesn't have as many features, if I remember uh, correctly, as the previous, uh, as the Mate version and the Cinnamon version, the latest ones here. Um, but here we go. It's the same old, same old, isn't it? It's it's exactly the same. So, what a bit of research that I did before recording this video was to have a look at the repositories to see if there were some of the same repositories. And um, as soon as Mint, as Mint Mint install program comes up, I'll show you for yourselves uh, some of the uh, bits and pieces that uh, that come. So, if you type in, for example. Uh, the Picasa, which is the, uh, you know, you can see you've got Picasa. Let's have a look if you can see uh, Google Earth. Yep, that's available there. So you've got some of the more proprietary advanced packages. Steam, as I've been going on about it. You've got the, yep, the Steam is still there, Valve Digital. Uh, I haven't, of course, tried installing them. Um, I'm going to assume that they'll, they work because Linux Mint, by and large, is a stable distribution. And if it isn't possible to work, then 
uh, then there's a way to correct it. Now, I did type in Skype, and I did this on the on the test run. There is, doesn't appear to be, just from searching, uh, a Skype client. Now, I did look on the Skype website, and it does say that there is a multi-arc Debian version available, and I did install that, but it did require 86 dependencies to be satisfied. That's a lot. That's It wanted to download 86. Um, so, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I'm not a fan of Skype. It's a Microsoft-owned company, so I'm assuming you guys aren't particularly big fans of Skype either. It's poorly put together. Google Hangouts is better. And the only reason you'd, like, you'd conceivably have Skype is, is for business. Uh, it's the only reason I've got a Skype account is because my network, wanna, when you know my YouTube network, desire to contact me. They do so through, through Skype, um, which is daft. It doesn't even install on my Android now. I uninstalled it once, and uh, when I tried to reinstall it, um, it left some dud files, uh, which for some reason can't be replaced unless you've rooted it, and I refuse to root my Android. Um, but yeah. So it by and large comes with the same software. Um, it comes with the same, st like mostly the same stuff in the repositories. Let's just crack open the update thing. I haven't had a look at this yet, but I'm going to imagine it's the same update uh, software. And again, bear in mind, I haven't um, updated this to the latest version. This is the version as it was on March 2014. So it's not ble bleeding edge. So even taking a look at this update package, um, manage, uh, you know, the update manager, it's uh, possibly even a little bit dated now because I do believe they've updated their package, uh, their update manager, um, even uh, after March. So... Uh, so you probably will end up getting a more advanced version uh, once you upgrade. I'm not going to upgrade in this video because this video is running at 31 minutes 27 seconds as it currently is, and uh, and an update is going to be uh, is going to take some time as well. It's even struggling a little bit on um, downloading the package information. What's going on here? I was doing so. I was just doing so uh, rather slowly. Is all. Sometimes you don't know whether or not that's just having rural broadband and it's just going through a bit of a rough patch. It is raining outside, so uh, sometimes that slows down our internet connection, which is a bit daft, I know. So, uh, yeah, this is the older version of the update manager. But as you can see, I am almost certain that one of these updates... Mint upload, mint welcome, mint sources, mint backup... So I would imagine that you might need to go through this process a few times to actually up update to the latest version. Um, and I would imagine that the mint update process would be updated, although it doesn't appear to be listed here. Um, and yeah, it has uh, Linux Mint. The Linux Mint repositories are pretty fantastic, and they're even more um, impressive um, on the Debian edition because they've managed to... Uh, to just expand the compatibility of uh, Debian testing, which is something they they absolutely deserve a pat on the back for. Um, because as much as I like Ubuntu, I think Ubuntu, and more specifically Lubuntu and some of the uh, you know children of Ubuntu, have made some fantastic contributions to the Linux community. Um, I, w I would like to see fewer distributions rely on Ubuntu uh, for a number of reasons. I think, you know, it can give Ubuntu a bit too much of a stranglehold on uh, Lin the Linux community as a whole. And I think, you know, Debian might possibly have more to, to offer in terms of actual freedom. Um, and there's a place for Ubuntu, there's a place for Debian, and of course there's a place for Mint. Um, but what uh, what can be a little bit dangerous is that when, when one software, uh, one one distribution becomes so powerful that other uh that that you know people come to rely on it too much and have no plan b um and, and that's part of the important um you know aspects behind diversity of software which is what the open source community is all about and you know like i say diversity is important diversity in uh software licenses uh you know diversity in the software itself being able to have multiple choices is a good thing of course there is the counter to that um that if you have too much choice you're spreading is you know people's skills too thin and sometimes it's best for example to all collaborate on one monolith open source project i.e GNU image manipulation program, otherwise known as GIMP. You know, um, there aren't very many competitors with GIMP, but GIMP itself is actually a pretty damn good piece of software uh, and has, has done wonders for the open source community. Personally, I would like to see them actually take a shot at doing that with movie editing software and video editing software, because uh, that is uh, one aspect where I feel Linux is 
tailing behind Windows quite poorly on that one, but that is a video for another time. This clearly looks like a very competent and fantastic distribution. I've heard a few rumors about Linux Mint Debian Edition that have actually been conflicting. I've heard people say that they're keeping Linux uh, Mint Debian Edition um, in a good uh, way uh, and they're keeping it very close to their hearts at the moment because they could end up using Linux Mint Debian Edition as their flagship distribution at some point if Ubuntu does something that makes it less attractive to the Linux Mint developers. And that is quite likely. But then again, I've heard rumors saying that this distribution um, might not be around in a couple of years' time because of lack of users who, you know, use it. Um, I don't know whether or not either of these rumors are true, but these are things that uh, have been thrown around quite a lot recently. That being said, um, Linux Mint Debian Edition clearly is very, it's, it's Debian testing, but polished and, um, and as glamorous, glamorous as any other Linux Mint distribution. If you are interested in a rolling release, or at least a semi-rolling release, this would be my first, I would say this would be my first choice of rolling releases if you count it as a rolling release. Um, it's easy to use. Um, Knowing the Linux Mint team, they have probably put stability quite high, if not at the top of their priority list. Um, and, uh, you know, if I was to describe the, uh, from, you know, my knowledge of the Linux Mint development team, I would, I, you know, the, the top word I would use is sensible. Um, sensible, you know, um, they uh, are people that I, they're the kind of people that I want running uh, my mission critical operating system. So with that in mind, um, if you are looking for a rolling release, then um, then I, I it looks good to me. That's all I'm saying. So uh, that's going to be about it from me today. Thank you very, very, very much for watching. And um, if you do uh, want me to cover any particular topics or distributions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. Um, like I said, this particular video today is done at the request of you guys. Um, so uh, so I'll be doing a lot more like it. Thanks very much for watching. Um, I will try and at some point cover more non-Debian based uh, distributions. I want to see where Fedora's at. Last time I used Fedora was a good number of years ago on that very same server that I mentioned actually. It was the last time I used Fedora in a big way. So it would be nice to see how it's developed, how it's changed since then. So I may be doing that one at some point soon, maybe when they make a new release. But until then, um, I will continue to make videos in my own way as usual. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.